<laughs> it's in cruise control at 30 miles an hour. Look at that. Thirty-five miles an hour with throttle only. What's up everybody, in this video, what I'm gonna do is go over an e-bike from the company Moke Wheels, how you would say that, and this model is the Basalt. They have like another one called the Obsidian and something else. I, they actually have like a wide variety of models, but this bike in particular right here has been really fun to ride. I have been riding it off and on for around about three weeks now, and I figured it's about time that I throw up a review for y'all. And what I'm gonna do in this video is kinda like start with the components and just kinda start he here in the back tire and just kinda work my way to the front and break down and all the components build qualities and settings and things like that so number one let's just kind of like get into it look how awesome this color is this is their camo pattern <laughs> this thing right here looks so good kinda like a desert type camo they have two camo patterns available for this because what mock wheels done they've made a bike that's more like an adventure style bike um, this actually has spots up here where you can mount like a like a gun rack on it you can you can see oh and let me just talk about some of the accessories on this thing so right away you're seeing it right here this seat is um, an accessory pack, seat post shock absorbers in a, a pack that comes in. So I highly recommend if you order one of these bikes to go ahead and order the Adventure Pack, which comes with this really nice bag, this wider seat, the, um, the shock absorber. There is a front basket on this. I, I took the basket off for the purpose of this video because it just kind of like overshined a lot of the video while I was riding. So, But I will show a picture of it with the basket on there. Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and start out with the specs for y'all number one they they rated this a class two e-bike but just so, and what does class two mean class two means that it's 20 mile it caps at 20 miles per hour throttle only it can do 28 with pedal assist but believe it or not there is settings in here that can get this thing up to 30 miles per hour on throttle only so i will later in the video if you're interested in how to unlock your mock wheel basalt and how to make it faster i will have settings later in the videos you there's chapters below that you can skip through before I do my ride test. Out of the factory, it's set at 20, but you can get it up to 30 miles per hour throttle only. And I, uh, top speed, I got it up to 35. So what's the range? So the battery capacity on this thing, it's a hidden battery. You can see right in here, the battery's hidden inside. Use a key right here to take this battery out. You turn the key, turn this little switch here, and it pops the battery out of the frame, and then it comes out of the frame. The battery capacity on this thing is, it's a 48 volt, 19.6 amp hour 925 watt samsung battery i've been very impressed with the battery range on this and the power that it outputs speaking of power so it's a 750 watt i'd read somewhere that it, it's up to 80 newton meters of torque which is a lot on a 750 watt motor monk wheels figured out how to really maximize a 750 watt motor because i have used some that have been you know feel like 500 watt motors and i've used some that felt like thousand watt motors this feels like a 750 watt motor motor is tuned perfectly okay as far as rider height so what they have on their website they have it from five six to six eight <laughs> which is crazy you can see you can i don't know if you can see my hip here but you can see how high this seat is and i'm only adjusted right there now obviously this isn't the right seat there is another seat that goes on there and makes it smaller but man is this seat comfortable this seat is so so darn comfortable overall bike weight you know i got a little extras on here it's 79 pounds so about 80 pounds that feels about fair but max capacity rider capacity weight on this thing is 400 pounds so there's the overall specs let me go ahead and start back here at the back and just kind of like break down the components and i'm going to do a rapid fire on these things like i need to talk any faster i get it so let's do that now okay starting back here at the back it comes with plastic fenders and i've ridden this thing on some off-road pretty hardcore and i don't hear them rattling at all it comes with this rack right here that has this wood paneling on it everybody check that out this thing is absolutely beautiful 
that is, I don't know, that's not even fake wood, that's real wood. The back brakes are the Tektro 180 millimeter rotors, so Tektro hydraulic brakes, very impressive on that, and these brakes are really good brakes. It's a seven speed tourney derailleur, nothing fancy. These tourney derailleurs are on a lot of e-bikes. It does the job, it's affordable, and you know what, you can always upgrade that if you don't like the derailleur, but you know what, it's an e-bike, you don't need to shift gears much anyway. One thing I wanna mention for y'all, this is a torque sensor, not a cadence sensor. So what's the difference between between a torque and a cadence sensor. Well, a torque sensor is more power you put into the pedals, the more power the motor is going to generate. A cadence sensor, you just turn the pedals once, it gives you max power right away. And when I do the riding test, I will show you some of this and see what I thought about it. Overall, does it work? Yes. To me, I think it could have been implemented a little better, but I think it works just fine. There is a setting in the settings how you can do, you know, you can go one through five and adjust the intensity. I I have it on three and three seems to work just perfect so i'm leaving it there five it gives you a lot of power right away which makes it kind of feel like a cadence sensor so yeah there's that i really like how they did the wire management inside this frame look at that grommet they put in there that's impressive everybody <laughs> and number one let me just talk about some of the quality of this thing there's no welds i think what they've done they've welded this frame and then they grind the welds down and then they paint it does this frame not look really good i'm so there's some welds right there you can kind of see how they do it. there's no quick release for the front tire but you know what that's not a deal breaker this shock right here is like it's not branded i don't see a brand name anywhere on this shock but it's 110 millimeter travel it does have a you know a damper here and it's got an adjustment here that i can tell y'all i've used a lot of these e-bike shocks this shock is really good you can see abs plus it can be locked out completely and each time you make these adjustments, it seems like it does really good. So that's one of the better shocks that I've seen on an e-bike. Very impressive with Mach Will on that. A dual LED headlight on this thing. I'll throw up on the screen what it looks like at night. I thought it was pretty good. I think out of the box, I mean, out of, from the factory, I think these headlights are just fine. The headlight and tail light, it's got a tail light back here. It does work as a brake light, a tail light. When you mask the brakes, it gets brighter. The tires are 26 by four inch fat tires. The tread pattern looks really good it's not it's a, like a off-road tread pattern obviously you know this is on-road off-road type bike they have reflective striping built in all the way around on both the front and back tire okay moving up here to the cockpit area let me just kind of like go over this real quick for y'all the the hand grips on this thing were very impressive they have mock wheel embossed inside there with some gel overlaid on it very nicely done and they're locking hand grip um, one thing i would change they use this faux leather stuff when your hands get wet i wear gloves so i don't have to worry about that a lot but when your hands get wet it's very slippery so i'd probably change this material but other than that these hand grips were some of the most comfortable hand grips i have ever used on an e-bike the levers are nice you know it's two finger pull up here very easy one thing with the throttle i did adjust it i moved all of this kind of down when it when i first got it, it was all lifted up but i did move it down to give it better access here it's a left-handed throttle and the reason they went left-handed on the throttle is because they put the shifter they have these trigger these trigger shifters on the sides right here you know the front and back which i I'm kind of like on the fence on these things. I like having up here because I like having my throttle here, but these things work great. One through seven, you know, Shimano tourney shifter. And once again, I had to move this also. When I first got it, it was all the way up and I moved it out. So that way it's just out of my hand while I'm holding on right there. That thing right there will dig into the back of your hand. So just loosen that bolt up and move it in a little bit. The stem is adjustable to adjust this stem. Loosen that bolt and you can move this stem up and down which I think it's a zoom still. I, I don't know, I don't see a name on it, but you can see the numbers right there, how you can adjust that still. Okay, so let's start going over this display. To turn this thing on, there's a power and an up, down, and a light button. I don't think there's a horn under here, by the way. You're gonna hold down this power button for five seconds, and then the dis display is a very nice looking display. It's green with white accent on all of that. I wish it was bigger. It's a very small display. You see the size of my hand here? It's very small. I'd like to see this display wider and, and larger and make the numbers a little larger, but it works extremely well. You can't see it good through polarized glasses. I do know that. Now, like I said, out of the factory, this is a class two e-bike. And let me just show y'all real quick on how to do some adjustments. Or I'll tell you what, let me just go over some of the features. So when 
when it comes on, it starts out in pedal assist zero, which there's no throttle. You got a headlight button right here. You push that once, and as soon as you push it, you see the headlight symbol comes up. Horn button down here. Really loud little horn. I'm out here in the middle of the, the lake here, and I heard that echo throughout the entire lake. I probably scared away all the fish over there too. Now to operate the walk mode, say you're walking across a bridge or something, hold the down arrow and then watch what it does. See, it just started taking off on me. So that walk mode lets you walk at about two miles per hour, walking up a hill or across a bridge, because you know what, it's a fat tire e-bike. These things weigh like a dump truck, so it's like pushing a dump truck up a hill. So you want to use that walk mode if you're walking. You know, there's some area, pedestrian areas, where you don't want to ride across, you jump off and you can walk it. What I do like, to use the cruise control, you can hold the throttle down, you can go half throttle, full throttle, whatever. While you're using the throttles, don't pedal, don't touch anything, and then hold the down arrow at the same time, which is not the easiest thing to do. You have to use your right hand and reach over, hold the down arrow, and it locks it in cruise control. So there is cruise control. Um, cruise control to me helps out when I have those long roads where I'm trying to get across town or something like that and I just lock it in a cruise and let it go. Okay everybody remember I talked about the settings on this thing so this is something that's always um, it, almost all e-bikes are kind of the same but this one's done a little different so to get into the basic feature settings see the up and down arrow here hold down both up and down arrow and watch what it does it goes to the settings this is called the functional settings now what does this have this have the brightness to enter the modes hit the power button see i have level one two three as far as brightness i'm leaving it on level three hit the power button again go down you got units unit will be kilometers or uh, miles per hour leave it on miles per hour startup mode is the startup mode is in free mode or safe mode. I don't know what that is, and I'm going to leave it that way. And then you can reset your tripometer here and your language there. So to get out of this, just hit the, the, headlight, the headlight button, brings you out of all of that. So then you're like, well, how do I adjust the speed? But remember I said that out of the factory, it's 20 miles per hour. And let me show you how I can do that. So lean in over here, hit the throttle, and let's see how fast it'll go. 20 miles per hour on the dot right now where it's at. Hold that down. Now watch this. So what I wanna do, I wanna hit the up, down, and headlight button all at the same time. So I'm gonna lay my thumb across all three of them and watch what it does. Now it goes into the technical settings. Now you see the first one said speed limit. That's what we all love is a speed limit. Hit the power button. It opens up there and notice it's on 20. Watch this, go up. This thing will go up, according to them, we're already at 30, so I'm like, well, I'm going wide open, <laughs> so I'm just, I'm going to turn it all the way. <laughs> I did notice that what it does, it goes all the way up to 61 miles per hour, so let's leave it on 61. Obviously, it won't do that, but I put it on there. Now, when you got it on 61, hit the power button. Now, you go down, and you're set. Now, the speed limit is set. Now, go down to power assist hit the power assist, it's in three and five. I'm leaving it on five, I didn't mess with that. Voltage meter, don't mess with that. Wheel diameter, don't mess with that. Don't mess with the techno magnets. Riding modes, now the riding modes, you can go motor, pedal, or pedal and motor. Leave it on pedal and motor, because I like the option. If I don't want to use it, I don't want to. Uh, then, now this is a one that you can mess with, the intensity settings. Go to intensity settings. I've got this one on three because I like how it has that slow power build up. If you want it to go faster, put it on five. The power is instant and it just takes off. But right now we're gonna do three and that way it's on that slow power build up. And then you got your factory reset right there. And to get out of this, once again, hit the headlight button and you go back. Now, remember I just changed it. Now, what was it before? I think it was 20, watch it now. It's going. How about that, everybody? Throttle only. 31 miles, 32. Can we get it? Let's shake it and see if it'll go faster. 32 miles per hour almost.
so there you go everybody that's how you adjust all the settings on here and then you look right here you see how it's in eco mode what i had found out when it's in eco mode it stays in eco mode until you go max power then it goes to power mode and goes all the way up i do wish they had more features on their display you have time riding uh psa level eco and then a speedometer and this is where i this is where it really like annoys me i wish they had a battery percentage you see this everybody can you tell me how much battery i have left in here i have no clue because all it is is a series of bars on the left and right it would be so easy for Mockwell to add a percentage right here. Am I at 60%? Am I at 80%? I know about where I'm at because when I first started, I had two bars up here and now I'm missing two bars. So <laughs> there you go as far as battery. Almost every e-bike I have, even those cheaper Amazon special e-bikes, they all have a USB charging port. There is no USB charging point port on this bike for your phone they could have easily added that but what they did add let me show you what they did add they actually added this feature right here look at this they have this labeled <laughs> they go out of their way they spend a lot of time even like having that molded that mold has their logo in it so you see this fitting right here this is a proprietary fitting from mockwell but they have their own solar panel and their own power inverter that you can buy it's not cheap and have this bike 100 percent off the grid and that power inverters a thousand watt power inverter and the solar panel i think it's a 200 watt right here is just where you would charge it you can charge this battery inside the frame or outside the frame bring it in the house and charge it or you can do it and these fittings are really nice fittings really good job on that i don't have the power inverter or solar panel but you know what if muck will wants to send them to me i will not turn them down all right everybody there it is there's all the specs and the build uh quality the components and everything and you know what the settings and how to adjust the settings because i get those questions a lot with these bikes so yeah let me go ahead and cut over some ride tests and put this thing to the the trails and off and on because i've been using it over the past few weeks and let me show you some of my experiences with it and then i'll come back here and i'll give you my final thoughts of what i thought about this thing after a few weeks of um riding this thing around so let's um let's get on the let's do some ride testing so i'm gonna start out in zero you know it feels like a heavy e-bike <laughs> i've pedaled enough of these things to know what they feel like go to two well you know i can hold 13 14 miles an hour on this thing with no no pa no pedal assist at all Let's go to pedal assist one. We'll be in gear three or four. The gears really don't matter that much when you're in pedal assist, by the way. You know what, it feels like pedal assist one seems, I don't feel any power after 10 miles an hour. This is me pushing it. Pedal assist two feels like 13 to 15. We can give it 16 pedal assist two, pedal assist three. Pedal assist three seems to be 19 to 20. You know, I like this horn. <laughs> this horn's a kind of a little loud. All right, pedal assist four now. Now we're getting up into the big boy gears and you see that I'm in max power. So it goes from eco, then it hits power mode. I'm coming up on some people, so I'm gonna have to slow down. It looks like 23, 24. Pedal assist four, and then five obviously will take me to 30. I've already tested five, and it goes all the way up to 30. Very minimal difference. And then once again, stoppings, really good. Here comes the train. Starting at this fence, and I'm gonna to go to where the biggest curve is. And this is where I normally test my, my e-bike speeds. And we'll see how fast we can get this thing going. So here we go, throttle only. No pedaling. It hit 20 very fast. So we're at the power pole, it's at 25. This is about one mile off. Throttle only, 27, 28, can we hit 30? We're at a curve.
Biggest curve, I hit 27, so I got 28 total. Let's try this downhill right here. Max speed, let's see how fast we can get this thing. Thirty-five. Brakes are very good on this thing. So I'm gonna show you the difference between a torque sensor and a cadence sensor. So it's in level five, PSA five. Look how I'm turning my legs. See what I'm doing? Look at the power. So if my legs are just barely turning, I, even though I'm in level five, PSA five, notice how, it's, how I can hold this at six, but I'm in level five. I cannot do that when I'm on my cadence sensor. Now watch when I start adding torque down on them. Now I'm pushing on the pedals. See that? So now I'm gonna really hammer down on the pedals. Now I've maxed out. Oh yeah, this is the spot for this bike. Doing almost 30 miles an hour on these little, little back roads like this is awesome. And it seems to eat this up, this trail, even though this is not a full suspension bike. Let's see what's down here. Ooh, tight squeeze, tight squeeze. This is what I considered some light duty mountain biking right here. It seems to handle this pretty good. I love it that you can just turn and burn right up some of these, these side roads like this. And this is great. This is exactly where this bike excels so well. You know, obviously you're not gonna be sending it like on so many big jumps, because it is a heavy bike, but it really likes this type of riding. And this is so fun on this bike to get out and ride like this. Because you're not allowed to have any type of motorcycles or ATVs or anything like that up here, but having a bike like this really opens up all of this trail network up here. It's pretty much going down through here. Oh boy, don't get airborne. I heard the wheel spinning. what that creek was back there all right everybody there was the ride test there and let me kind of go over some of my likes and dislikes we'll start out with the likes first number one i really like the fact that it's kind of like a torque sensor slash torque switch it kind of like goes back and forth it helps preserve the battery i think it gives you more range with that the speed and power of this thing for a 750 watt hub motor was very impressive on that the build quality is phenomenal they did a really good job on the build quality looking over this thing um the accessory package that they give with this is really cool. I love how Mockwell um, is their accessory package is all set up. Ride comfort was really cool. I really like the ride company. And speaking of cool, just the coolness factor. Don't it just look cool? Does this bike not just look like it's ready for an adventure? You can throw a, you know, a bone arrow on it and just take off into the woods for weeks at a time and come dragging back a big deer or bear or something. That looks really cool on that. The colors on this thing, not many bikes do camouflage colors. I do like the fact that 
they have partnered up with a camo company and they're putting camo on there. The range on this thing was very impressive. I've maxed out. It seems like you're going to get about 50 miles of range during normal use, which is pretty impressive on a, you know, a battery of that size. So now let me go into some of the cons, dislikes. I wouldn't say they're really dislikes. Some, let's say some places I think Muck will can improve. Okay, number one, there's no, I, I cover this in the, in the um, settings. There's no uh, USB plug-in. How do you charge your cell phone? There's no place to charge your cell phone. Um, they could have easily added a USB like out right here, USB-C out or USB-C out here. The display's pretty small. It's a very tiny, it looks really good, but it's tiny. It's a very tiny display when you look at it. So it's not the easiest to see right there. Unless it's nighttime, then it's really bright. Another thing, the buttons are very small. I have kind of thick hands and you see one of my thumbs can cover almost three buttons. So these buttons are very tiny. They could have easily made that a little wider and put bigger buttons on there. I think that's something that they can improve on right there. We'll leave links below on where you could pick up this bike or any of these accessories on this bike. I highly recommend the Mach Wheel um, Basalt. I have had nothing but pleasurable experience out of riding this thing over the past few weeks, and I think you will too. You pick one of these up, and anybody, if you got any experience with this bike, leave in the comments below, because I like hearing what you guys have to say if you have any experience on one of these Mach Wheel or the Mach Wheel um, brand at all, because I have seen these guys around. I've just never used one of their bikes well now i've been using one and i've been very impressed with them there it is everybody that's all i got today on the mock wheel basalt e-bike see you all on the trail